The Last Jedi is a movie that's designed to subvert audience expectations. Nowhere is this more evident than in the way the film handles its three male heroes. X-Wing pilot Poe Dameron, renegade stormtrooper Finn, and legendary Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. Initially, all three characters seem like they should fit neatly into familiar archetypes for men in action-adventure films. In Poe, we expect the hotshot fighter pilot who is celebrated for blowing up the bad guys. In Finn, we expect the noble defector who is determined to take down an unjust system. And in Luke, we expect the wise warrior who wields tremendous power in the name of fighting evil. But in each case, The Last Jedi doesn't deliver on those expectations, at least not immediately. Instead, director Ryan Johnson throws fans a series of curveballs. Over the course of the first act, Finn reveals his self-centered and defeatist attitude. Poe proves that he's reckless and arrogant, and Luke is so consumed by paralyzing guilt that he's renounced the Jedi and become a hermit. These unexpected character twists are part of the reason why some Star Wars fans left the theater in a state of shock, which rapidly mutated into fits of rage on the internet. Now, to be clear, we're not talking about people who just happen to dislike The Last Jedi. It is, after all, not a perfect piece of cinema. No, we're talking about the subset of mostly male superfans who felt betrayed and personally disrespected by this movie. Anything else? The objections from that particular group are wide-ranging. The two were accompanied by a girl. But they often involve an obsessive level of scrutiny when it comes to female characters. What girl? On the more extreme end of the spectrum, fan complaints have a tendency to devolve into wild conspiracy theories about the Disney Corporation pushing an agenda of forced diversity or feminist propaganda. But there is a common thread running through much of the backlash that speaks to an underlying anxiety. An anxiety rooted in deep-seated insecurities about masculinity. Let me briefly explain what I mean by that. Leading men in action-adventure movies are expected to be decisive, righteous, respected, and to take charge in most situations. Men are expected to achieve success by becoming progressively more and more powerful as the story unfolds. This expectation is part of a long-running tradition in Hollywood, and the formula is so entrenched in mass media that many fans feel aggressively entitled to seeing that particular version of manhood reproduced on the big screen. But as The Last Jedi begins, it quickly becomes apparent that this movie isn't interested in catering to a simple vicarious power fantasy. All three male heroes are presented as vulnerable in their fallibility, with each displaying their own set of rather significant character flaws and inadequacies. Now, flawed heroes in and of themselves aren't all that unusual in speculative fiction. In fact, Failure, and then learning to overcome that failure, is just the standard recipe for structuring a basic character arc. I'd argue the intense fan hate surrounding The Last Jedi has a lot more to do with the fact that the male heroes in this movie are directly challenged on their failures by women. Leia. This is not something that's supposed to happen to space cowboys or space wizards in Hollywood blockbusters. Okay. Listen. Women aren't supposed to interfere with a man's heroic journey. So let's dig a little deeper into the unexpected ways that men are held accountable for their behavior in each of the movie's three intersecting storylines. As many critics noted when The Last Jedi first hit theaters, the theme of women challenging male bravado 
is most evident in the character arc of Poe Dameron. Poe is a hotshot fighter pilot. He's impulsive, he's arrogant, Disengage no, Commander, that is an order. and he cares more about being a big damn hero than he does about effective strategy or even the lives of his compatriots. The gung-ho rebel pilot is a familiar archetype in Star Wars media, and as a result, we think we know how it's going to play out. Audiences expect the good guys to bring down the enemy death machine in a giant ball of fire. And we expect to revel in the joyful spectacle of impossible explosions in outer space. Direct hit. Dreadnought down. But instead of framing Poe's daring raid on the Dreadnought as cause for celebration, the movie suddenly pulls the rug out from under us. You're demoted. Well, wait, we, we took down a dreadnought. At what cost? There are things that you cannot solve by jumping in an X-Wing and blowing something up. I need you to learn that. Poe is rebuked for his apparent victory, and by extension, the audience is rebuked for enjoying the fireworks. Those explosions that we were taking such pleasure in just moments ago are abruptly reframed as cause for self-reflection and sadness. And we find ourselves suddenly confronted with a narrative about consequences. For some Star Wars fans, it must have felt as if Princess Leia had just reached out of the movie screen and personally slapped them across the face. Now, it's noteworthy that blowing up the space fascist death ray isn't framed as morally wrong. Instead, we're asked to consider the tactical and human cost of that violence. If ever a beloved leader is incapacitated, we expect our brash hero to suddenly find themselves in command. But that doesn't happen either. The chain of command is clear as to who should take her place. Vice Admiral Holdo of the cruiser Ninka. Vice Admiral Holdo is even less sympathetic to Poe's attitude than General Leia. I've dealt with plenty of trigger-happy flyboys like you. You're impulsive, dangerous, and the last thing we need right now. She harshly chastises Poe for his recklessness and rightly dismisses his antics as a liability to their mission. And this is really what's at the heart of why so many angry fans tend to hate Vice Admiral Holdo's character so much. That's what you got? That's what you brought us to? Power! Get this man off my bridge. Poe Dameron's story is that of a cocky, headstrong, never-tell-me-the-odds style male hero who is repeatedly reprimanded. You have bet the survival of the Resistance on bad odds and put us all at risk? until he finally learns to listen to and trust women in positions of power. As episode 8 begins, Finn is a man obsessed. He wants nothing more than to find his friend Rey and then get as far away from the war as he possibly can. Finn's intentions are selfish and driven by a lack of faith. He's convinced that the fight against the First Order is a lost cause. Sorry, but this fleet is doomed, and if my friend comes back to it, she's doomed too. Enter Rose Tycho, a low-ranking maintenance worker who's a fan of Finn's exploits from The Force Awakens. Gotta get back to what I was doing, so... What were you doing? When she realizes he's not really the committed resistance hero that she's heard stories about, her disappointment is palpable. Rose takes on the role of Finn's guide and mentor. Look, this whole place is beautiful. I mean, come on. Why'd you hate it so much? Look closer. She's the one who pulls back the curtain to expose the oppression festering just below the surface of the galaxy. And who do you think these people are? There's only one business in the galaxy that'll get you this rich. War. Unlike Leia and Holdo, Rose holds no formal position of power, but she does speak from a position of moral authority. I wish 
I could put my fist through this whole lousy, beautiful town. She articulates the political and moral reasons why the resistance is necessary. And in doing so, she inspires Finn to finally identify as a rebel. You are always scum. Rebel scum. And it's her role as moral compass to both Finn and to the audience that's responsible for a good portion of the rage directed at Rose's character from the more toxic side of Star Wars fandom. Many of these guys can't help but view a woman who is serving as teacher to a male hero as anything other than preachy, annoying, or emasculating. Are you kidding me? The fact that Rose also happens to be played by an actress of color only magnifies their anger. The other reason for the backlash against Rose is because she interrupts Finn's big heroic sacrifice. During the film's final battle, Finn embarks on a self-destructive charge. His heart is finally in the right place, but his judgment is clouded by his eagerness to act on his newfound convictions. As the movie makes clear, Finn's suicide attack is doomed to fail. Poe tells him so. Bell, pull her off. What? The cannon is charged. It's a suicide run. Rose tells him so. It's too late. Don't do this. No. I won't let them win. And we see Finn's rickety airspeeder falling apart around him. But Finn is so focused on striking a blow against the First Order that he can't see how ineffective this strategy is. Understanding that his action amounts to a noble but senseless sacrifice, Rose steps in to save Finn from himself. The heroic sacrifice is part of a long tradition in media, wherein death is framed as a way for men to prove their bravery, their convictions, their love, and even their manhood. And movies tend to romanticize images of men going out in a blaze of glory. We did it! The son of a bitch did it! Yeah! Even when their sacrifice is senseless, ineffective, or unnecessary. <laughs> this notion that death, and violent death in particular, is redemptive or restorative for men is so deeply ingrained in media that many angry fans are adamant that Finn's misguided kamikaze attack would have succeeded, despite the film explicitly telling us otherwise. These fans are incensed that a woman got the big damn hero moment, and she got it, in their view, by robbing a male hero of his chance at martyrdom. Why would you stop me? I saved you. When Rey finally meets her hero, the legendary Jedi Knight isn't at all what she expected. Luke Skywalker has become a cynical old hermit. A man so consumed by fear and guilt that he's turned his back on the Resistance and closed himself off to the Force. Needless to say, this comes as a tremendous shock, both to Rey and to the audience. Go away! Like Rey, many Star Wars fans were expecting Luke to appear as a triumphant badass, the one they remember, or rather misremember, from the original trilogy. The thing is, Luke was never really depicted as a great Jedi warrior. Han, can you reach my lightsaber? Yeah, sure. When Luke says this, I think what? I'm gonna walk out with a laser sword and face down the whole First Order? His words are a reaction to Rey's assumptions, but those lines can also be read as a response to fan expectations. As I mentioned earlier, it's assumed that Hollywood heroes, especially men, will grow exponentially more powerful over time. The expectation is that once a man has conquered his demons, those demons will stay conquered forever. But even though Luke rejected the dark side back in Return of the Jedi, I'll never turn to the dark side. 
his struggle to resist the temptation of absolute power isn't over. For the briefest moment of pure instinct, I thought I could stop it. And he's still scared of the darkness hiding inside himself. Just as he was as a young man back on Dagobah. Although this older version of Luke Skywalker is consistent with his characterization from the original trilogy, angry fans still believe that The Last Jedi represents a downgrading of his power and his status. But I didn't see you. The fan fury is exacerbated by the fact that it's a young, untrained female Jedi You've closed yourself off from the Force who challenges this mythic hero on his failures. Of course you have. Not only does this young woman reprimand the great Luke Skywalker, Leia sent me here with hope. If she was wrong, she deserves to know why. We all do. She directly confronts him and inspires him to reconnect with the Force. Later on, Yoda offers guidance too, but it's Rey who opens the door for Luke to overcome his paralyzing self-doubt. Now, reach out. So instead of seeing the old Jedi Master teaching Rey how to wield the awesome power of the Force, <gasps> I feel something. audiences are treated to scenes in which Rey reminds Luke what it means to be a Jedi. The galaxy may need a legend. Of course, Rey isn't a more powerful Jedi than Luke, and she ends up being wrong about her ability to fix Kylo Ren. But she does possess something that he's lost. Rey still has hope, she still has conviction, and she still has clarity of purpose. The idea that a young woman like Rey would have something important to teach an older, mythic male hero like Luke Skywalker is erroneously viewed by some male fans as emasculating. It's worth pointing out that angry fan defensiveness isn't necessarily just a reaction to women existing in popular science fiction stories. If women are included alongside male heroes in a way that doesn't overshadow, upstage, or interfere with traditional expressions of masculinity. Well, let's get one thing straight. I'm in charge out here. You do everything I say exactly as I say it. Excuse me? Just relax then we don't see these same kind of extended temper tantrums from male fans. Especially if the female characters in question are cast as young, white, and conventionally attractive. The Last Jedi isn't satisfied with simply including women. It goes much further, and puts female characters in positions of institutional power or moral authority over male heroes. The movie then has those women leverage that power to challenge and ultimately force change in men's behavior. Tell me the truth. And that is almost unheard of in a major blockbuster film. In the end, our three male heroes face up to their mistakes and overcome their failures. Poe learns from Leia and Holdo to put aside his desire for heroic short-term gains. Let's go. No, wait and instead consider the bigger picture. It's only through Rose's moral insights that Finn comes to believe in something bigger than himself. And Rey succeeds in inspiring Luke to be the best version of himself again, and ultimately to do the exact thing he mocked her for earlier in the film. Luke does indeed end up walking out with a laser sword and facing down the whole First Order. Despite what the reactionary conspiracy theorists claim, this is not an agenda of masculine inferiority. Women in The Last Jedi hold their male counterparts accountable not out of animosity, but because they genuinely care about them. I like him. Me too. Male heroes are not being diminished or erased in this movie. In fact, a lot of time and effort is devoted to giving men transformative arcs. The Last Jedi is a story about men learning to trust women's ideas and decisions, and then becoming better people and better heroes because of it. 
And while that might be an unexpected message for a Star Wars story, it's a vital lesson that men need to learn if we are to achieve gender equality. Thanks for watching. These video essays take a ridiculous amount of time to write, edit, and produce, so if you'd like to see more of them, please consider going over to Patreon and helping to fund my project there. There's also a link to PayPal in the description below. In the coming months, I'll be working on a few new video essays, one of them on gun culture, media, and masculinity, and another one on the ways that sexual assault against men is often played for comedy in Hollywood. So until then, thank you all so much for your continued support. <laughs>